Hey, what's up guys? Kalamazi here, and today I want to talk to you all a bit about the proposed changes that I have for Warlock so far in Shadowlands Alpha. Now at this point we have roughly 24 or so hours played on my Warlock, we're at max level which is currently 53, and I've run the first dungeon, the Necrotic Wake, a few times as Affliction, Destruction, and Demonology. So I feel that I have a pretty solid grasp on how each Warlock spec feels, and what can be changed or improved upon as we get further into Shadowlands Alpha. Now I do want to say quickly that I do stream 5 to 6 days a week on Twitch, I'll put a link to my channel somewhere down here below. Uh, all my week auras, profiles, add-ons are there, available for you for free. If you want to spring by, feel free to grab them and drop a follow while you're there. Now, I'll place a link to the Google Doc that I've written, as well as the Alpha Warlock feedback thread where I posted said feedback in the video's description. If you guys have any questions or thoughts on these changes, feel free to drop them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Now, let's get right into it. The first thing that I want to talk about, which is one of the larger issues I've seen with Affliction and Destruction over the course of BFA, and they were sort of alleviated towards the end with 2-minute Infernal builds and some weird, I guess, 2-minute-esque Dark Lair builds. But we're back in this state as of now in Shadowlands. 3-minute Dark Lair slash Infernal CDs are inherently limiting in multiple scenarios compared to classes with less powerful CDs like Stormkeeper or even Demonology with your Tyrant being a minute and a half. With the changes to Unstable Affliction, I feel it's pretty safe to consider moving our Dark Lair cooldown to 2 minutes from 3. Doing so gives us a better damage profile in both single target, cleave, and AoE slash mythic plus based encounters. It's also not as overpowered at 2 minutes without Unstable Affliction, or I guess with Unstable Affliction, being limited to one iteration on all targets. This also gives us the ability to pair it with our 2 minute Dark Soul cooldown and not wait an entire minute for Dark Lair to come off CD. A 3 to 2 minute change goes a long way in helping the overall fluidity of Affliction in nearly every aspect of the game. Another hot topic in Shadowlands Alpha right now are 6 second pet summons. 6 second pet summons are restrictive when swapping pets mid fight, in both plus and raids alike. There are times where I want or need a fell hunter to interrupt bosses like Mythic Ilganoth and then later on want to swap with my imp. The same can be said for Mythic Plus with Obelisk, Dispels, Purges, Interrupts, and Voidwalker taunts. 6 seconds is just too restrictive when it comes to summoning a pet which is part of our core rotation. I would like to suggest and potentially see a change having an ability like Fell Domination or Flames of Zoroth which gave you a very short summon time on your pet return. It both fits the classic returning abilities that they're trying to bring back in Shadowlands and also helps alleviate a lot of the issues. Now for those of you who don't know, Corruption, the actual dot, not the system in 8.3, Corruption is back. I guess in a sense back, Corruption is the baseline ability enough for Warlocks in Shadowlands. Demonology, Destruction, and Affliction all have it. Corruption going baseline for Demo and Destro is exciting, however it feels underwhelming and a bit lackluster. Demonology and Destruction have a 2 second cast time, which makes it unusable in multi-target scenarios, as it takes 8 seconds to apply 4 dots. Barring the damage being buffed to an extreme, I feel Corruption will only be used as Affliction where it's still an instant cast and works with the specs overall design, CDs, Dark Lair, I beam damage, things like that. Working in some kind of resource generation like partial shards for destruction or a chance to spawn an imp per tick for demonology could be a way to make the spell relevant outside of Affliction. If it remains having a 2 second cast time in its current form damage wise, I just don't see this dot even being used at all for demonology or destruction. Speaking of curses, Curse of Recklessness and Weakness, if working as intended, currently require two Warlocks per raid as they're applicable to bosses. Stacking with other class buffs leaves roughly 11 raid spots after you factor in Fort, Intellect, Battle Shout, Magic debuffs, Melee debuffs, and a few other things along the way. This is very limiting due to the defined raid size that Mythic brings. Mythic Nazoth, for example, needed a certain amount of immunities to deal with Thought Harvester soaks. Requiring certain comps while also introducing a handful of new class utility spells like Recklessness, Weakness, Wind Fury Totem from Shamans for example, might be a bit too limiting for a mythic 20 man structure. Back in Classic WoW and Burning Crusade, I guess vanilla WoW, you had 40 man raids and 25 man raids, but in the 20 man mythic structure as of now, it feels really bad having essentially half your raid just locked due to raid utility spells. Now I'm not really sure at this point if they're supposed to be applicable to bosses, and while it is unique and exciting seeing the curses return, I feel that they'll probably end up doing more harm than good if you take into account raid composition as well as boss balancing in the long run. 
Now that we covered most of the generic changes I want to see for Warlocks, let's start off by talking Affliction here. Dark Lair as a cooldown does not bring anywhere near the power level it does in BFA currently, but still brings with it a 3 minute CD. With Unstable Affliction not stacking anymore in Shadowlands Alpha, Dark Lair's baseline I-beam damage, in my opinion, should be increased from 10 to 20% or so. Some modifiers should be there to compensate for the lack of 4 additional Unstable Afflictions. To the same extent, Death Bolt feels much weaker as well due to the changes with Unstable Affliction not stacking, and how it also is affected by Dark Lair. Now I'm not sure of the current plan that development has for Death Bolt, but it most likely needs to be revisited with UA in its current state as well. Malefic Rapture being our main Soul Shard spender feels like it's more AoE based. Potentially having a more single target based spender that amplifies our dot tick rate on the mob that has Unstable Affliction applied would fit the single target toolkit better that Affliction's looking for. There is an ability called Soul Rack that was mentioned in the first class changes post about 4 days ago which did just that but is not currently present in this build of alpha. An ability like Soul Rack would go a long way in separating our AoE toolkit a bit from our single target toolkit. At this point, Rapture does deal a good bit of damage single target wise, but it still has that AoE centric feel to it. And with tuning being so all over the place in the very first version of Alpha, I feel like they probably could potentially reel in Malefic Rapture's overall damage to make it more impactful AoE wise while giving us a single target spender to sort of differentiate between the two when it comes to single target versus AoE or cleave based scenarios. Now with Unstable Affliction being limited to one application overall, I propose a change to have UA deal a baseline amount of damage to the mob, but also have its damage increased by X, which is based off how many dots you have ticking as a whole. Now there would need to be some kind of cap on the damage increase from the external dots, but this fits the current direction of Affliction's playstyle, while also complementing its toolkit in Mythic Plus and Council style fights. I feel Haunt and Unstable Affliction are too similar at the moment, both with having their 10% damage modifier, and this would help differentiate between the two as well. If a change was to be made to Haunt in an attempt to further separate the two, Haunt could be moved to a much longer cooldown, potentially 30-ish seconds, but also bring with it a higher percent damage amplification. This would give Affliction certain windows of higher on-demand priority damage when warranted, which plays into the current version of Affliction pretty well I feel. Alright, now let's shift our attention a bit towards Destruction here and start off the Fire and Brimstone. Fire and Brimstone's baseline increase to shard generation I feel is not the main issue with the ability. The 60% damage reduction that it deals to surrounding enemies is just too limiting. The fact that it also shares a talent role with Cataclysm, which is our best AoE and single target ability, is another issue in itself. A buff to Fire and Brimstone's damage dealt to surrounding targets would make it a contender against Cataclysm and AoE based settings, as it would be both a DPS increase, most likely depending on tuning, and fuel even more rolling havoc, rain of fire windows with the recent shard generation buff that it received. In the end though, I don't think having Fire and Brimstone and Cataclysm on the same row is just really going to work out. I do know that Blizzard wanted to explore purely AoE based talent rows in BFA, but I, I would urge that if they're going to try and make changes to these rows, separating Fire and Brimstone and Cataclysm would be a big big change. I'd like to see Fire and Brimstone come back baseline, however I don't think that's going to happen. So finding some way to fit Fire and Brimstone on a separate row from Cataclysm and give you choices in an AoE versus single target scenario I think is the best option here. Now I did talk about this issue a bit at the beginning of the video here, but being in the destruction section I wanted to give it a little more attention. Infernal being on a 3 minute CD is very limiting when it comes to a wide array of scenarios. With the loss of Vision of Perfection and Crashing Chaos, which enable the 2 minute Infernal build currently in BFA, in Shadowlands destruction is once again in a concerning spot. Our damage output as a whole is too low outside of our Infernal window, and the loss of Rolling Havoc and Flashpoint make us an even larger issue on cleave fights. I propose the introduction of a new talent that reduces the cooldown of our infernal by X seconds for each soul shard spent or chaos bolt cast. I feel that soul shard spent is superior due to rain of fire being cast at times in AoE. I do feel that a talent swap with an ability in the 15 or 25 row would be most effective here as the 35 row is currently AoE based with 45 and 50 having already impactful talent choices with current tuning. The effect could also be baked into Chaos Bolt or Rain of Fire's baseline toolkit which would be a huge quality of life change. 
If the issue of our Infernal being a 3 minute CD is not addressed through some kind of cooldown reduction, then I think our damage outside of Infernal needs to be brought up a bit passively to compensate for the 3 minute damage profile. At the same time, a few changes to Immolation Aura or Grimoire of Supremacy could be in order if the CD was brought down to a 2 minutes baseline without shifting any talents around. Having a guaranteed 2 minute Infernal CD goes a long way for us both in Mythic Plus as well as single target cleave based raid encounters. A 3 minute damage profile is just not really where you want to be currently in Mythic Plus and in a lot of in encounters in general. It's just very limiting and playing a class that has most of your damage in a 30-ish second window every 3 minutes and then you don't do much at all just really doesn't feel great as a whole. It's really exciting for that half of a minute but then the 2.5 minutes you have between your CDs are just relatively boring and you don't feel very impactful which is why I propose the 2 minute infernal change. Now I will say out of all three specs currently in Alpha, Destruction Toolkit does feel the most complete in a sense, which is sort of interesting because not much has really changed from live, but if you think about it, not much has really changed with Destro in the past three-ish expansions anyways. The Toolkit just feels good as a whole. I do however want to mention Shadow Burn potentially returning as a baseline ability, or an ability that we can use and execute like Expansions Past, which will both cater to the returning ability side of Shadowlands, as well as help round out Destro's overall toolkit in similar fashion to Shadow Word Death for Shadow Priest, I guess Priest in general. This would also help free up a talent slot in a sense for the Infernal Cooldown Reduction base talent. Destruction's toolkit is one that feels most complete like I mentioned in Alpha, but I think bringing back Shadow Burn baseline would go a long way for a lot of reasons. Returning abilities, giving you a pseudo execute, and also having the Havoc Shard, Shadow Burn Shard-esque sniping, Shadow Burn cooldown reset ability back would be good for the game. It would raise the actual skill ceiling of Destruction a bit more. I did also want to mention or talk a bit about Destruction's overall lack of mobility before we round out the Destro section here. In the end, Destruction is the least mobile spec out of all three Warlock specs by a good bit. Affliction can obviously refresh dots in the move, and Demonology can cast Implosion, Instacast Demon Bolts, uh, Call Dreadstalker procs, a lot of things along the way which make it a pretty mobile spec actually. Destruction really only has one thing, and that's Conflict Rate. You can cast Rain of Fire, but a good bit of the time you're not going to cast Rain of Fire on a single target boss. I propose Fell Flame. Fellflame is an ability that I feel would complement Destro's toolkit well, while also working to fix its lack of mobility. Out of all three Warlock specs like I mentioned, Destro just truly is the least mobile spec, and it just, having nothing to cast in the move feels pretty bad and just sort of makes you feel that the actual spec toolkit really isn't complete in a sense. We're also losing the Chaotic Inferno Azerite trait, which gave us a small chance to proc an instant cast incinerate. Now obviously they had the proc at the right time on the move, but it was something. I feel that Fell Flame or a version of some kind of Fell Flame-esque ability that we can cast on the move would be a welcome addition to our arsenal and greatly help alleviate the mobility issues that Destruction has currently in Shadowlands. Alright, now I obviously saved the best for last and that's Demonology, right? Okay, so I did want to save Curse of Doom for this section here because Demonology does have an improved Curse of Doom talent, but keep in mind Curse of Doom is essentially it is available for all three specs as far as Warlocks go. Curse of Doom could and probably should be reworked to have a chance, maybe like a 1% or so chance, to summon a Doom Guard whenever it deals damage. Having it be the actual killing blow on a mob or boss in nearly any setting is too unrealistic and makes the ability, or the second half of the ability, essentially irrelevant. Improved Curse of Doom also benefits from this change in addition to being more thematically suiting for Demo as a whole. The auto and slave clause on Improved Curse of Doom is mostly irrelevant due to it being so hard to actually summon one in its current form, but if changed to the aforementioned version, becomes much more relevant. In the end, it is so insanely hard to fulfill the, the, the Doom Guard proc clause on Curse of Doom here, it's pretty much impossible. Even in solo dungeon or solo questing content, Doom has to be the actual ability to kill the mob. So essentially you have to time it even questing on your own. First of all, a mob has to live long enough, basically a minute. If a mob lives like over a minute, it's not a rare when you're questing, I don't know what you're doing. So it's mostly irrelevant there, but even in it gets so much harder to, to fulfill that second half of the ability in parties. And in raids, you have a better chance of literally winning the lottery. 
you have to have Doom be the ability that kills the mob. It has to proc at the exact right time, and has to be the ability that lands that killing blow, while 19 other people in the raid, I guess 20, because including yourself, are trying to kill that mob as fast as possible. The second half of this effect here is essentially irrelevant. I, I feel that Curse of Doom really could be changed the way I mentioned here, and it would be much more relevant. Obviously, reducing the proc rate from 5 to 1 is probably just what has to happen, but it, it actually, you probably would have a, you have a much higher chance of seeing a doom guard spawn with internal with improved curse of doom enslaving that doom guard it makes it even more relevant i think if it's left in its current form curse of doom is probably not even going to be played very much across the board now the next change i'm going to talk about here is one we've been asking for since the launch of battle for azeroth demonology needs a baseline interrupt that does not require us changing to something besides the fell guard as Demonology Warlocks, we're directly punished for doing so by losing talents like Soul Strike, Demonic Strength, as well as the bonus damage the Felguard deals baseline as Demonology. Grimoire Felhunter is also an option, granting us the ability to interrupt while also having it tied into Demo's baseline toolkit. In the end, I'd take either here, but Demonology needs some kind of baseline interrupt. It, it doesn't. A, a spec at this current point in the game, with Mythic Plus being such a large part of the game, and even need, needing interrupts outside of that, it doesn't feel complete. It's not that it's sort of thematically suiting. It doesn't feel complete. It feels like the spec is not finished. An interrupt should be baseline across every single DPS spec, tank spec, and potentially even healers as well. But baseline demonology is the only spec, as far as DPS goes, in the game without an interrupt. We need one pretty badly. Tying one to our Fell Guard or just giving us the Grimoire Fell Hunter ability are both solid options there. And finally, the last thing that I want to talk about here for Demonology is that Demonology without Baleful Invocation or some kind of Soul Shard generating ability feels pretty lackluster and overall incomplete. I'd like to see Baleful Invocation either return as a passive ability tied to our Demonic Tyrant or a talent potentially in place of like Inner Demons or Summon Vile Fiend. Both those abilities are more or less single target ones, so the swap feels pretty natural there. And the thing is, even outside of Baleful Invocation just making this spec feel better as a whole, not having Baleful Invocation as a part of our toolkit affects our damage in Mythic Plus and things as well. Yes, your Demonic Tyrant is a large portion of your damage. Yes, it's on a pretty short CD, in Shadowlands being a minute and a half, and in BFA being one. A good portion of your damage, though, is also from those five shards that your Tyrant grants you while summoned. It allows you to cast really quickly a Hand of Wuldan into Call of Dreadstalkers, or another Hand of Wuldan depending on refunds, whether you're playing Soul Conduit, things like that. It's much larger than it seems and feels. It really, really holds the spec together as a whole. And I feel that if we don't have some form or version of Baleful Invocation tied to our Tyrant or as a talent, if we don't have access to some form of Baleful Invocation in Shadowlands, the spec as a whole is just not going to feel complete. And that's about all I got, dudes. Now, I do want to say I did take a lot of your thoughts, advice, and everything into consideration, into account, when writing this actual document and putting it up. In the end, I'd love to see WAD, Mop, Demonology back with Meta, Chaos Wave, things like that. But it's just not going to happen with Demon Hunters being a thing. I'd like to see Soul, Bur Soul Burn, Soul Swap back. I'd like to see other abilities back as well. The thing with giving feedback is you have to sort of keep in mind it has to be things that are realistic. And I, I just feel that overall those things, as much as I'd like them back as well, they're just not very realistic as a whole. So suggesting, hey, let's completely overhaul demonology back to the way it was in the second or third build of alpha sort of makes people just glance over your suggestions and not take them seriously at all. So I tried to keep them in line here with what is certainly possible in Shadowlands moving forward. Let me know what you guys think of these changes in the comment section below. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them there and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you guys want to see more WoW content, be sure to smash the subscribe button as it helps out a lot. Thanks guys and I'll see you all again on stream soon. Peace!